A lot of you guys already know that buying an effects pack or an assets pack is a lot easier than trying to do a specific effect yourself. But have you ever felt that an assets pack has only one way of being used? So it's almost like you're not getting enough bang for your buck. What if I told you that you could take this asset and make this and this and this? My man Grant is gonna show you eight ways that you can take motion graphics from any pack that you ever buy and actually customize them to match the aesthetic of your specific project without even having to open up After Effects. Grant, the floor is yours. Thanks, Josh. Toot. Something as simple as changing the colors of an asset can make a huge difference. Say the branding of our campaign is Matrix Green, but our asset is Cyan. Go to effects, video effects, color correction, tint. So let's drag that on and then change the white to green. This is particularly useful if the asset is colorless to begin with. Scroll the hue. If the asset has color on the other hand, we can scroll the hue around to where we want it using color balance HLS, which you will find in the obsolete folder. I don't know why they've made it obsolete. Let's make this one purple. Now I'll simply copy and paste it so it loops and done. Stick around to the end of the video to find out how I create glows without a glow plugin. My name is Grinan Fletcher. I am a motion designer specializing in tour visuals and I've worked for... I have a major soft spot for all things 70s and 80s and with that in mind, for today's tutorial, we're gonna be using this. The link is in the description. These hacks are absolutely applicable to almost any pack. You don't need Arcade to follow along, but since I made it, I thought we might as well use it. Stacking. This pack is exported as Apple ProRes 4444 RGB plus alpha. So that means most of the loops have a transparent background and you can stack them to your heart's content. Sometimes how you would choose to stack and design a layout is enough for a project to be uniquely yours. Over footage. There is no easier way to spice up your shots than by slapping some motion elements on top. Drag and drop a border overlay over your shot or even integrate digital elements into the shot. I'm using directional blur and Gaussian blur in combination here to fake anamorphic depth the field. By the way, the way I justify buying new creator tools is that I will include the price of it in the invoice for a project that I'm currently working on. Now I don't list it in the invoice per se, but I do include the price in the total. So say the quote was a grand, I'll make it $1,050 so that I can get the pack that I have my eye on. That way I buy something for the project at hand and it's like outsourcing to a motion designer, but for the 10th of the price. Learning how to spend money to make money well is such an important thing to learn and this method can just help you dip your toe in. Border details. A popular look is to create some text and icon driven details similar to what I've been using on the edges of frame here and there in this tutorial so far. This minimalist look is all about symmetry and design sensibility. It's most effective when everything is super small, almost to the point where you can't read it. Now, some of you might've noticed already some very specific 70s and 80s film references in Arcade. Comment all four of the film's reference will pick someone to win the pack absolutely free. Blending modes. Now I use blending modes in almost every single project. This adjustment layer has the tint and curves effect for a contrasted monochrome. And then I'll drag this psychedelic lava look on top. And under opacity, we can try multiply or screen or exclusion or even the color blending mode for a more fairy floss look. And why not just try all of them just to see what happens? Blur. Here's a really simple trick for a tidal background. Just blur something. Bonus points if you only blur it vertically, giving off these cool lines, very Netflix. It's so simple, but it can give off a totally different vibe and often be a lot less distracting. We have one final hack left. But if there's anything else that you would like me to teach, by all means, leave a comment down below. Or of course, check out my own YouTube channel for more videos just like this one. Glow. For Arcade, most of these have built-in semi-subtle glows for that ready-to-go, out-of-the-box retro vibe. But say you had some 
something that just looked too sharp and digital. Premiere doesn't have a native glow effect, so I like to make my own fun by stacking blurs. So let's duplicate this layer three times. I'm going to use a Gaussian blur. And on this first one, we want to make it pretty small so the extra only just peeks over the edges. Let's change our blend mode to lighten and opacity to 60%. Now these settings will be completely different depending on the brightness of whatever you're working with. Next layer, we'll do the same, but pretty much double the blur size and maybe bring the opacity down a touch just so that the blur starts to taper off the further it gets from what is causing the bloom. For our final layer, let's go big with say like 130 blurriness. Let's use a screen blend mode instead this time, but back the opacity off to like 25%. You could be more subtle with this look or more overt, but this is looking way more analog already. You can tweak it by using more layers with the blurriness numbers closer together, while also bringing the opacity per layer lower. We really hope you enjoy Arcade. We'd love to see what you make with it, so please tag us on the gram. And whilst you're here, why not watch another video? It's on the house.